What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to recreate my thumbnail in Affinity Photo because I have completely removed Adobe Photoshop from my life. So what we're talking about today is the reasons why I went from Adobe Photoshop to Affinity Photo and honestly the biggest reason is Adobe is irrelevant these days. Uh, Adobe Photoshop is currently changing to try and always know what you're doing so using either ai which i hate ai for so many reasons or basically you accept the agreement to have anything you're working on being able to be seen by adobe and that's honestly just anti-trust right there that's that's anti-user and that's horrible another reason why i'm not choosing a linux alternative is because they all have horrible ux issues and honestly, I don't need to be relearning a whole new program just to be able to get my work done. I'd rather just be able to jump into a program and know instantly what I'm doing, which is what Adobe Photo really is. At first, I thought, oh, Adobe Designer, Adobe Photoshop, sorry, Affinity Designer, and then, you know, uh, Adobe Photoshop are the same thing. They weren't. So it was Adobe Photo and then, you know. Uh, Adobe Photoshop and then uh, Affinity Photo. I'm getting my words mixed up. I ended up learning how to use Affinity Designer because of that. And that's honestly kind of cool because I got to recreate my entire logo from scratch. And honestly, it looks brilliant. You'll see it near the end of the video, but still, it was worth it because I knew Illustrator to some point, but it was just a weirdly overcomplicated program. And it just acted weird where affinity designer is just more intuitive and straightforward and i watched 20 minutes i think total of a how-to video on how to get started in affinity designer and i pretty much was on my way and how to do things and it was it was really really cool and then later on when i was touching up the uh the logo and making it work i got to learn more things like tracing and so on so both Affinity, Photo, and Designer are now a part of my system, which is really nice. And even though you have to use a custom wine to be able to use this in a nutshell, this is still far more stable than Photoshop ever was for me on Windows or on Linux, which says a lot. So uh, at random points in times, Photoshop would freak out. There would be some sort of artifacting, glitching, bugging, crashing. Some things would work, some things wouldn't work, like liquid wouldn't work. Liquid works fine in this. I can pretty much do anything in this and not have to worry about a crash. And that is a godsend, honestly. Now, the whole monthly subscription thing for Adobe was always a no-go for me. I never bothered with it. I was always one of those Adobe products are better hired it than bought because it's true, they didn't deserve anybody's money with the way that they treated people and the way that they put so little attention into their own program that made them who they are and just basically said, mm, you guys aren't worth our time. They stopped optimizing it. They stopped you know, fixing bugs. They, they released these beta softwares that don't really fix much of anything. They integrate new AI features mostly and it just ended up being a big failure on their part because honestly, why would you not put any effort into your moneymaker, right? It's an industry standard. Adobe Photoshop was an, in an industry standard. And now everybody just looks down upon it because of the choices it made. They could have done so much better. They could have brought themselves to a better place where they would have been at the top of their game without being sneaky and weird and just plain creepy and if only they just managed to pull their head out of the sand for 10 seconds and listen to the people around them saying it crashes when i do this it bugs out when i do this it artifacts when i do this ai is too restrictive uh the ai is encroaching on my creativity yada 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 maybe I'd still be using Photoshop. Maybe we wouldn't have to worry about them stealing our work. Maybe 
it would just be another timeline where they cared about the user instead of pulling a canonical and forcing snaps on everybody. That's a horrible thing. Or Ubuntu users. I don't know you guys how you use that thing, but damn. <clears throat> now, as you can see so far, uh, the thumbnail's going pretty well. We're adding some gradient effects. We're about to add some bevel and do a whole bunch of cool stuff and make it work. And again, the learning curve going from Adobe Photoshop to this is almost nothing. It would just be about learning the new tools because your layers are on the right side. All your tools are on the right side. It's not like Krita where it purposely just flips the UI upside down to try to be like, we're not Photoshop. <laughs> uh, every time I bring up Krita in a video, there's always one person that goes, Krita's not a Photoshop alternative. It wasn't made for that. Look, if you went and implemented 95% of what it takes to be a Photoshop replacement, people can use it as one. There's not much you can do or say against that, because at least it gets it more attention. If you guys solve the UX problem, if you guys make it more user intuitive, if basically you took like a 5-20 to 20 minute course on YouTube and how to do proper design, Krita would be amazing. It really would. But it doesn't really have much use. I mean, it's drawing program, great. It does good at that, but it's UX is just god awful. And at least when it comes to this, Adobe Photo or Adobe Design, they don't have a drawing program yet. Hopefully they'll make one. This is just a godsend. Like this was made for users where Krita just looks like it was made by developers for developers and purposely is just kind of a weird and annoying to use for anybody just wanting to get into it. I remember when I took um, an image of Star Ocean uh, Second Story R, they released this weird little poster for it and people wanted to expand it for their desktops. So I took it upon myself to center it and recreate the whole forest from scratch. I grabbed as much as I could in Krita and I did what I did and it came out it looked absolutely fantastic. I don't know if I can even go find it. I'm going to go try to see if I can find it while we're still talking. And here's the crazy part. Yeah, it didn't really take that long. But uh, it shouldn't have taken as long as it did. You know? Uh, I don't know how to really say it. I'm trying to figure out the words. While I'm also typing this. Uh, yeah. So here it is. Look. Oh, well. I guess I could just edit this part in, I guess. Yeah. So we went from this. I removed the lettering and did all the stuff. Then, as you can see, I corrected it. Then I added more detailed grass and stuff. Added a rock. And uh, here's the final image. Overall, I think it looks pretty fantastic. For what I did, anyway. I wish I would have added a little more detail here and there, but... It looks fantastic. And then I made a joke one where I hit a gorilla somewhere in here. Oh, fine, I turned it off. No, this is where I got rid of the rock. And then, I did the gorilla. Yeah, it's a gorilla in the mist. Alright, back to this. So this is me resizing my logo, and trying to get everything just to where it needs to be. Pretty much, it was hell, because my logo's massive compared to this. I made sure to put as much detail in it as I possibly could, uh, to honestly make it good to, you know to make it look really in depth and good and just function. So no matter if you're standing at it, you're staring at it from a distance or up close, it still looks great no matter what. All right. So <clears throat> the logo's made, you know, uh, the thumbnail has been remade and again, I have my reasons for doing what I did. I have my reasons for switching. I'm sure someone's going to complain about it. They always do. 
you'll always manage to pull someone with the thinnest skin imaginable that doesn't like your decisions. To those people, dude, get over it. You know, I found something that works better for me. And honestly, you've done the same probably thousands of times. So just let people have it. Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Finishly Publi Affinity, Affinity Publisher are absolutely incredible programs. The fact that there's no monthly subscription, that's great. I love that. You end up saving money in the long run. Is it an $80 program? Hell yeah. And do you get 25% off when you're upgrading to the next major version? Yep. So it ends up being even cheaper. So in the end, you end up saving money no matter what. No monthly subscription, no attitude problems, no weird bugs, no weird crashes. And the fact that it renders off a of Vulkan is definitely a plus. Uh, it has GPU support, OpenCL support, tons of different things going on. I wouldn't ask for a better program because I couldn't find one. As simple as that. Uh, GIMP's not up to the task. Crit is not up to the task. There's no real alternative that is up to the task. Here we go. This is it. Not much to say. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. You know... Check the description to learn how to install Affinity Photo on Linux. Uh, simple GitHub. Basically, you copy a command, paste it in, throw in your executable. I have a video on it. I'll also link at the end of this, you know. And just enjoy your day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow on stream. Bye, everybody.